Well, good morning, everybody. Well, today we got an interesting project. We're gonna install conduit for fiber optics. So we decided that uh, the internet provider that we're currently using, the cable company, uh, is charging too much. So we're gonna change over to fiber optic. There's a local company named Hunter Communication. Thank you. And uh, so shout out to them. Uh, one of the things is they need to have a conduit to, because uh, currently my property that we have, there the communications up at the power pole, and I'm not wanting a line going overhead. I want everything buried. So I'm gonna provide them a conduit sleeve for them to feed their cable through so everything will be underground. And there's gonna be a box on the outside of the house right there. So I'm gonna take this uh, one inch uh, I'm preferring one inch over three quarter. They could get three quarter, but the 90s are much, much smaller. So uh, I'm gonna use one inch, and instead of a 90, it'll be like 245, so it's kind of more gradual. And so buried, it does, there's no code on how far down it needs to be buried. Uh, I prefer at least 12 inches here in the Willamette Valley where we're, where we're located. <clears throat> the frost line is that my code is about a foot down for most most things such as foundations and things like that if we were in the cascade mountains it'd be deeper uh if we were any other parts of the country the, the it's different on that freeze and thaw so you want to kind of be below that freeze and thaw line so for where we're at it's you know i need to be at least uh 12 inches down uh, but as far as code wise, it really doesn't have to be that deep either. So <clears throat> as you can kind of see, I do have some water. I went ahead and dug the trench yesterday, got a trencher. <clears throat> and so the reason where that water's coming from up here, I got a curtain drain. So I had to cross my curtain drain, which is right down here, bedded in some gravel. So I got a curtain drain going right around here and across my property and that gathers all that spring water and directs it down through here. So uh, my conduit is going to be over top of it. I'm going to try to stay above it, uh, that pipe, so water can still flow. And I'm going to pack some, uh, some dirt back into here to help kind of dam up this uh, uh, where the water is just coming through in that direction. So that's something I got to work on. <clears throat> still got to clean it out and uh, kind of pack down the bottom and all this right here is just spring water coming or groundwater coming through and head that way and I'm okay with that capturing it going to the curtain drain and out I just try prefer to not have it going that way as much as possible and if it did in the end that's okay because uh, eventually it's gonna stop there and head out that direction Someday I'm going to have uh, a retaining wall back there with a, a drain and that will just tie into that drain and feed out to daylight. So going up here looking at the my, my trench. So everything right now is kind of frozen. It was it got below freezing last night. It's probably about 28 degrees out right now. And I'm going to show you right in. Here's my another groundwater spring type area. This is where the water's coming, feeding in right in here somewhere. So kind of interesting. <laughs> so it'd be nice to capture that at some point, but not on this project. Um, and then coming over to the power pole. So coming in, there's a few things coming over. You gotta be real, real careful. I did have a locate. You can see there's a gas line, but from the previous builds, previous digs, that gas line I know is pr pretty low. You can look at some previous videos where I installed electrical going in and around. So I had electrical coming from this box and going that direction. That's at least three feet down. And I never made it deep enough for that gas line. So I know as shallow as this is, I'd be, be doing pretty good. Then when I get over here to buy the power pole, I got a 90 up. <clears throat> Just leave a little stub up, kind of like the, the cable conduit is. And that cable conduit, it went that direction 
man this real real long a uh, bunch of 90s going over to that direction towards that side of the house and rather than trying to cut and pull that out and trying to reuse all of that same original conduit there was just too many bends for uh for fiber optic so <clears throat> time for a new trench and the trench itself the trencher uh for one day is 258 bucks and uh where we're at so there's a an expense there oh yeah shoot i got my tool don't leave that out that's funny squirrel <laughs> uh but anyhow i completely forgot what i was saying uh the trencher so uh try to get as much as you can plan for one day for a, for a trencher you know 250 bucks not too bad it's a ride on behind one it could dig as as deep as three feet and uh it's a six inch wide trench in in this case uh they do have trenchers that are four inch and they also have trenchers even smaller that only go down 12 inches uh they just didn't have that available at the time and i'm trying to get this done uh this weekend uh as far and then as far as backfill it doesn't necessarily have to be backfilled for it but uh i like to have it kind of backfilled as well I'm trying to get that uh in a timely manner so that i can get the uh the fiber optic out here installed get that going so i can cancel the 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 cable so actually i'll be kind of excited about that it's about 100 bucks less than cable and uh higher speed and all that sort of thing and i don't have to rent a a, a modem either so i'm really looking forward to that and seeing this process and if anything i i got two options so or previous owner someday i'll have two options uh for internet uh and then the third and fourth would be satellite and other stuff but this is uh the best fastest uh for what we got in our area and uh so let's do it so next step is to get the conduit installed and uh well actually excuse me not conduit but I need to pack back down some of this loose uh, so like here spread this out pack it down uh, so when I put my conduit in is there's not too much underneath it so when I backfill it's not pressing putting pressure on the conduit so much uh, and then once I kind of pack that down pack it on the downhill side of the the curtain drain um, then it'll be time for the conduit and when i lay the conduit i'm also going to lay in a, uh, a a locate line so uh it's just a copper wire that i'm going to lay in it so that if any time else uh i want to or i choose to uh locate where exactly it's at they can detect it and without it because fiber optic is glass they don't have that locate the coax it's got a copper wire in it so that's it doesn't need that it already has it built into it so yeah that's uh that's the next step well i got the trench all kind of cleaned out you can see all this water this is the downhill side of it and got it packed the dirt compacted on this side of the curtain drain and then on that side kind of smooth it out so the pipes just gonna so added a little coupling here's a 45 more of a sweeping for the fiber optics and when you go to glue you put it on one side then when you shove it over the residual is not flowing inside the tube there for for electrical because a lot of times what happens is the the if you put it on both ends as you shove it in there's a whole bunch of excess all right well, you got some of the pipe in when I go to backfill this, I'm going to be pushing that way down. That way it's down in there and working our way around. Try to get a whole bunch of it gone before uh, I start backfilling. I got my helper.
All right, time to back fill. So this pipe, I gotta push down and lift up the other end, but that's all right. Eventually I'm gonna have a, a footing down here. George Grim Parker, can you over? So what I've been doing is I'd step on the conduit, backfill a little, step on it, backfill, back, you know, working my way backwards because the bottom of the trench is kind of going up and down a little bit. And so as I'm stepping on it, backfilling, it's actually, so right down in here is I got the end and I do have to dig a little bit down so that it lays back more flat against the, the power pole. But this GoPro doesn't really work too well when it's really cold and keeps shutting off. So I got my lovely assistant gonna hold that pipe back there so I can throw some, see how it is up against it. So she's gonna push against it like that. I'm gonna get some backfill from back there, toss in it, but that's just pretty much the final product. Otherwise, it's ready for uh, putting in the wire. So. Well, we're back. It's been right about a year since the install and I just wanted to finish up with the video and show you and go over a couple things uh, about the fiber optic. Here's the fiber optic cable coming through. I puttied the end of it so no water's kind of getting in. It's a special kind of putty so water doesn't get in and it doesn't uh, decompose and fall, break down and fall apart. Right here, here's the box that it goes up into and they do what they do best and switch over to the smaller wire and it goes inside the house. From inside the house, they should be sealing it up really good. Uh, see, inside the house, uh, they make special, they cut into it, make a special connector to where it uh, connects into their modem. So um, here's the backfill, it's all backfilled, taken care of. Take a quick shot over at the, uh, um, at the power pole, but uh, we've been using it for about a year and it's been awesome. I gotta tell you, fiber optics seems so much faster, no delays, uh, very happy with the fiber optic. So, <clears throat> and also the some of that savings, that's pretty nice. Uh, I don't, I guess I don't have much else to say about the fiber optic, but uh, you can see it's been, uh, grown over since then repaired but uh so you can see it go the fiber optic comes from the power pole and uh and comes on down that's something that they take care of they pulled through there was a little bit of difficulty in uh pulling the wire so i gotta say a, a inch and a quarter conduit would have been probably better instead of the one inch there's a long ways to pull and just those couple bins was a, a bit much but we were able to to use a vacuum and a blower to run a 
uh, a, string, a pull string through and then tied it on the end and pulled it through uh, once we got that pull string in. So, but uh, something that would aids in when you're pulling wire through a conduit is if you grease it. That's something we didn't do. Uh, if we were to do it again, that's, uh, you know, would make things easier. So all in all, looks pretty good. That's the process. So hopefully you enjoyed and like always be safe out there.